today we will be dealing with very important uh, topic regarding the Judas Iscariot. I will give you at least four lectures uh, on that issue. You know, people among the Christians, many of them feel that it was not fair to Judas Iscariot, uh, where he was chosen for killing Jesus. Why was he chosen? And later, he was ended up with suicide himself. So it was not fair to uh, Judas Iscariot. Uh, Christian God is very fair God and a loving, compassionate God. How could he can do that? How could he, you know, uh, uh, show such a unfair treatment to that person? That has been many Christians' questions, particularly among those uh, humanistic mindset Christians, okay, among those the liberal uh, Christians, not only the liberal, the Christians who often attempt to interpret Bible in human human knowledge and human way of uh, uh, rational interpretation, then you as a pastor, how could you answer to their questions on this particular topic? So I will, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, I will be sharing so-called very strategically important issue regarding the Judas Iscariot behavior, whether that is God's ordained plan or not. Okay? So I will be dealing with that issue step by step. I hope you will all follow my teachings in this particular topic. Okay, now lesson nine. We are we are raising questions. Why did Jesus call Judas Iscariot a devil? You see here, here in John chapter six. It's right here, John chapter 6, verses 70 and 71. This Bible verse is very crucial Bible verse. John chapter 6, verses 70 and 71. Later, you just uh, uh, read it over now. This story, in John chapter 6 story, is just a a middle, middle point of his public ministries, not the beginning, not the end, about the middle point of three years' public ministries. Don't forget to telling people about that, okay? Now, all of a sudden, Jesus was telling his 12 disciples where they gathered together in front of Jesus, okay? Jesus made a very interesting remark to those 12 disciples. So Jesus told his 12 disciples, and he said this, have, have not I chosen you 12? He said, I have chosen you 12, you guys. And he said this, 
One of you, one of you is a devil. He said that. In Hebrew word, in, in Greek word, ace, diabolos. You see, now we've been, talk, we've been studying the diabolos. Remember that? Now here, he did not say the devil. He did not say the devil. What the devil is? The devil is Satan. But Jesus was referring to ace diabolos, oh devil. In your language, in your Bible, it's not clear. Okay? That's why even even Korean version is not clear. Just uh, because no such a you know, indefinite article or definite article. How about takalog? Takalog is not clear. You Nepalis, and you Hindus, Indonesians, you all, Arabs, no. That's why you have to explain them. Okay? Explain them, oh devil. See, in the previous lecture, I told you, a, in a pyramid society, remember? The devil is what? That's the top, okay? Then, Oh, devil, devils means small devils are all the way from number one all the way to when? Number eight. All these devils are the subordinate devils, not the devil. Bible describes a devil or devils. Okay? So only the devil refers to Satan, highest guy. Okay? Now, that we assume that the Judas Iscariot, okay, although he was in human form, but prior to that human form, he must, he must be one of the number one to eight. One of them. We don't know what position he would be. He may be a member of number one group or number two groups all the way to number eight groups. Are you writing down that? That's important part here. Okay? Always. But we do not know what level Judas Iscariot were. He wore, but what level he was. But we know he is not the devil. He is a devil. Are you with me? Okay. Now, this is what Jesus referred to. Where? In John chapter 6, verses 70 to 71. Then he said that his disciples you know, was very much wondering when Jesus said this. One of you guys is a devil. And they were so surprised and wondrous. And immediately after Jesus said, he said this. He, Jesus, spoke of Judas Iscariot. He said, Judas Iscariot is a devil. Although he is with us in human form, but he is a devil in a spiritual sense. Not only that, Jesus said this, Judas Iscariot, he should betray me. You see, that's his job was described. Okay, he should, he must betray me. Isn't it interesting? Okay, 
in the middle of the public ministries, all of a sudden, in front of the 12 disciples, okay, Jesus just directly mentioning Judas Iscariot is a devil and his job is to betray me later. Where in the Bible? John chapter 6, 70 to 71. Don't forget that. Got it? Now, with that implication in you, okay, now I'll continue here. Later, in the Passover dinner, that is the end of the three year public ministries, before his crucifixion, okay, that's a later means, in the Passover dinner. See, after the Passover dinner, Jesus, Jesus, in front of the 12 disciples, okay, Jesus pray to Father God. That is described in John chapter 17. John chapter 17 is the prayer of Jesus right after the Passover meal. That very famous chapter, John chapter 17. Don't forget that, okay? In his prayer to Father, he said this in verse 12. Father, Judas Iscariot is the son of, is the son of destruction. He said that. Who is the destroyer? Satan. So he is subordinate. He is, he is a son of Satan. He was dialoguing, Jesus was dialoguing with the Father God. Father, one of my disciples, Judas Iscariot, he is, a, is the son of Satan. And he was telling in his prayer to Father, said, Jesus, me, I will not keep him. Who is him? Judas. Okay. I will not keep him to save because he is the son of Satan, destruction. But, he said, however, but I will, I will keep the 11, remaining 11s, I will keep them and make them safe. Nonetheless, Judas Iscariot, whom I will not save him. He was speaking to his father. Then I say, why? See, why? She say, why? Then Jesus addressed this. This is a very, very important remark. Why? To fulfill the scripture, he said that to Father. Okay? In order to fulfill the scripture, I will not save Judas Iscariot. Then our question lies this. Where in the scripture? What scripture? Then let me ask you, what scripture should be fulfilled? Genesis 3.15. This is a very, very important. Genesis 3.15. What is a Genesis 3.15? The seed of woman and a seed of Satan. Remember that? Okay. And they will be fighting. Then who will claim victory? The seed of woman. The seed of woman is Jesus. And a seed of Satan must be Judas Iscariot. Okay? So, to fulfill that 
Genesis 3.15. What we call the Genesis 3.15? Proto-Evangelion. Remember that? Proto-Evangelion and Proto-Evangelion. The first good news and the first gospel. We call that. We have studied that. Okay. So in order to fulfill the proto-evangelion, then Judas Iscariot should be incarnated into human form as, as the son of destruction. Now, I just raise up here. This Judas Iscariot was before he became a human, he was a, one of the, he was a, a fallen angel. Okay, he was a fallen angel, belonged to Satan family. Now, remember, the angel can be incarnated in the human being, so that we could, sometimes we would ask, how could the fallen angel came to uh, human form. Yes, angel can be incarnated into a human form. See, according to Genesis 18 story, and also we've studied that Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2, angel often incarnated into human form. How could it be possible? Because our God, our Jesus God is what? Omnipotent God. You write that down. Omnipotent God. He can do whatever he wants to do. He can make even angel uh, into humanity. He could do that. Omnipotent God. In order to fulfill his, his, his plan. Nothing impossible in him. Okay, to fulfill the scripture, to fulfill the proto evangelion prophecy, why not? It's possible. Our God, our Jesus, made the fallen angel into humanity and named Judas Iscariot. It's possible. Now, the second question is why Jesus have chosen Judas Iscariot, a member of his 12 disciples? That's the question. Okay. Why 12 disciples, member of 12 disciples? So I just, I just, Imagine myself that, oh, to fulfill the scripture, okay? In other words, to fulfill the scripture means he, in order to fight against Jesus and betray Jesus, he should be very near to Jesus, okay? Access to Jesus, not far away from Jesus. He, he should be very near to Jesus. So it was God's plan to make him access to Jesus, near to Jesus, okay, and intimate relationship with Jesus, which we will be uh, studying later in the next and next lectures. So in this first lecture, our question is what? Why did Jesus call the Judas Iscariot a devil? Then you say, wow, in John chapter 6, verses 7 to 71. Are you with me? Then Jesus said at the end, why? Because in order to fulfill the scripture, Genesis 3.15. Good. Let's take a break.